Welcome back to our 5 minute revisions series and today we're going to take a look at the fetch decode execute cycle. So the first thing we need to worry about is what is the stored program concept. So we'll look at this in greater detail later on. But the idea is that the program and the data that a program needs, such as um, a variable or a file or whatever, is all stored in the same location, which is main memory. And as far as we're concerned, we don't know what it is. Okay, the program itself does, but we could look at memory and we wouldn't know which bit belongs to which. Okay, the memory unit we use is RAM, random access memory. Um, and not that relevant to the course, but we used to store programs on paper, on punch cards. Therefore, you have to have a big stack of paper that we stored all the data, all the program in one place, and that's not great. So this is called the von Neumann model, where we use the same piece of memory. And then the central processing unit, as we saw before, with its various registers, fetches, does something, and executes an instruction. Simple as. So it fetches instruction. It understands what that instruction is and what it needs to do. And then it does that job. And then that cycle continues thousands or even millions of times in a second. So the first thing is we get the address of the next instruction. So let's say it's the first time running the program. The first instruction might be in slot one or instruction zero if we're starting from zero. And that is copied from the program counter to the memory address register. The instruction that's held at that address, so not the instruction itself, but um, we go to that address and then we copy whatever's inside that memory um, into what's called the MDR, which is the memory data register. And then whilst that's happening, we then increment the program counter by one or change it because it might be an instruction that changes the program counter, which we'll look at when we look at little man computer. So let's say we've got two instructions, they go in that order. As soon as we've copied it to the MDR, we will change that program counter from one to two or zero to one or three to four, wherever you're at. What we then do as well is the CPU will then copy the contents of the MDR and put that to the current instruction register. So the MAR stores the address, the location of where that data or instruction is, and the MDR stores the actual value or the actual instruction. So you can see in this diagram there, step one, the address of the next instruction is transferred from the program counter to the MAR. We then find that location specified by the MAR and transfer that into the MDR. We then increment the program counter by one and the MDR gets copied into the CIR, the current instruction register. We then look at that instruction that's held in the CIR and we look at it and figure out based on its opcode and operand, what is it actually asking us to do? Is it an add command? Is it a store command, load, whatever it is? If it needs additional information, let's say that it's an add command that it's adding to register three, it then fetches the data it's adding to and passes that to the ALU and the accumulator and does that operation. The opcode specifies what we're actually going to do and the operand will either hold the data that we're going to use. So for example, it might be the number in address three plus the number four to make seven, uh, or it might be the actual data itself. So as we can see on screen, the instruction is decoded. So we figure out what it is based on its opcode and operand. We then get the additional information if we need it and we pass it to the accumulator, get stored there. And then whatever that instruction is, it then gets executed, it gets added, whatever it is using the ALU. Once that's done, it gets put back into main memory or it may just stay in a register. Quite a quick one, this one. We managed to complete this one in four minutes and 25 seconds, uh, according to my timer. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed that video. Please look at the previous video and watch this space and see the next video, which will be on CPU performance. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.